Hello everyone. My name is Satwinder Davines and I'm the director of the South Asian Studies Institute at the University of the Fraser Valley. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to start by acknowledging that I live and work on the territory of the Stolo peoples, the people of the river. I give thanks to them for sharing this beautiful bountiful place. I also want to acknowledge my culpability as a settler and to work towards truth and reconciliation about my position a caveat this talk is really my world view it's really about my experiences my learning my training and all the unlearning i am doing along the way i am interested in the idea of perception you know that ability to see to smell to hear to understand to know what we see around us and to make sense of it all through this those of us who are lucky to be able to use all our senses use them to the best of our ability but i must say we pay scant attention to the daily onslaught of our perceptions but it takes a special kind of energy to look at our blind spots and to really peer into the darker recesses of our mind and senses to see what resides there and how do we perceive the world as a child i grew up in a northern city in india in the himalayas in the north and my sense of clarity was sharpened by the brilliance of the blue sky the crisp air the smell of the pine trees of all the people that walked around me that looked like me talked like me i hardly questioned my existence it was by most accounts a pretty idyllic life with a pleasant hum many years later i immigrated to canada and i found my senses assaulted right from the beginning by almost an unbounded ignorance that i encountered in my daily life from the very first day of my arrival when the immigration officer looked at me and asked me in a very loud and stilted voice whether i needed an interpreter and my dumbfounded expression and comment to say why don't you speak english his withering look should have given me pause but it did not i was young and i was new to this country and i ventured out into to find myself in this new environment my rose colored glasses did help but it was tough i know that when i started living and working in canada the people that i encountered also had their experiences i would go to find a job and people would say it's filled but i almost knew that it was more than that it was that hesitation to shake my hand it was those shifty eyes it was that dismissive message that said you are less than what we want what i want to share with you is really about my journey of 45 years in canada it has been a journey of much learning and much unlearning while i was born in india i count myself lucky to be calling myself a canadian and today i think i'm a canadian first my indian heritage has become second place on many counts my opinions are canadian my experiences and perceptions are informed by canadian living my ideas of social justice are framed by the canada of today and of the past my citizenship is intensified by gaining new knowledge and my have a personal commitment to social justice which is informed by canada's global position as a peacekeeper in the world but i am also aware that working in the area of social justice is very complex and the outcomes that we seek in social justice are buried under layers and layers of deeply inequitable power and privilege in our society this we know that those who have power and privilege know they have it and they use it with immunity i also want to acknowledge my position of privilege as an english speaking educated woman living in a rich and comfortable country 
But I'm also keenly aware of the color of my skin, my gender, my age, my circumstances as an immigrant, as a first generation Canadian woman. The perceptions of others also have a great effect on me. My privilege is not so great that I can forget my vulnerability as a woman, as a person of color, my color as a marker, marker of something less, my age as a limiting factor of my abilities, and the lack of resources that I can avail as a new person to this country for social justice. How then do I become a social justice warrior in all that I face and the othering that goes on. As a society, I believe we do not want a trickle-down effect of social justice. We want it to be bold and full-bodied and relentless and fearless and unsolicitable. We also want to be trusted. We want to be believed. We want to be encouraged. And above all, we want to be accepted. Social justice perceptions are not singularly defined. Everyone's identities are complex and multi-layered. No one person can be defined by one identity. There are multiple identities that cause us so much trauma and so much injustice. And to be aware of the intersections of our identities and find ways to dismantle those systems is critically important. Sometimes in Canada, I feel there is a very large disconnect between what we perceive and what is really our reality. One of the most debilitating factors in society is the marginalization of people, of their thoughts, of their ideas, and of whole societies. I know there's hierarchy in society. Patriarchy, caste, class, wealth, poverty, power, privilege, heteronormativity, all of these hierarchies prevent us from being our whole selves. They omit, they reject, they neglect, they erase whole histories of people. And at the same time, they egregiously create a perception of homogeneity as if we are all equal and we are not. The effect on the individual who is affected by these otherings is very, very important to understand. For me, I would suggest there are three stages that allow me to move from mere perception to reality, to understanding that reality. First of all, I'm always checking my assumptions. Every day, I wake up and I try to listen to my thoughts. I look over my shoulder. I question that, those ideas and thoughts that, towards which I can address those assumptions. Second, I'm always working to place my privilege in a position to do good. Uppermost in my mind is the idea that to do good, you have to be willing to be selfish and not, and to be selfless and not selfish. Limiting our potential as humans is one of the most difficult and abhorrent facets of our humanity. Thirdly, I'm always looking for ways to construct a better alternative to all the negativities around me and around all of us. As I age, I become less tolerant of how impatient I can become. I am less tolerant of the time that people need for change. The time is now. I believe there is no time left for us to wait, for people to figure out that there is a dark and deep unrelenting oppression in the lives of our people in the world. This is not an, an equitable world. There is a north and south divide on this planet that leaves us with haves and have-nots. There is a caste and class divide that leaves entire generations with pain and anger. There is a racial divide that leaves so much of us in repeated anguish and there's a repeated onslaught on our thoughts of our human condition. We are frail as humans, and our nature, I think it is the most difficult to overcome. The idea of the huge effort it takes to start to understand ourselves, to know what makes me tick, to understand myself, that is probably the most difficult thing one has to do. We must look inwards. We must take the time and not be afraid of, to question that 
and those thoughts and actions that make us who we are. Along with that, I believe we must work to rid ourselves of all the discriminations that we have in our mind. This is very difficult work, but it must be done. So I would leave you with these thoughts. Walk with me, stay with me, become a social justice warrior. It is what makes us better for ourselves and for the world. Thank you.